Welcome to Your Creative Self, the last week. Your Creative Self, hello, good. Hello, good. We're down to, here, the last one. Who's going to pick today's animal? A mountain goat. A mountain goat. <laughs> okay, not any old goat, everybody. Mountain goat. Let's collaboratively do one mountain goat picture. And they're plagued by the ghost of their father, who still wants him to be a normal farm goat. Oh, my God, it's like Billy Elliot in goats. Let's draw Toronto. Of course, Drake is there. Marvellous. I'll treasure this masterpiece forever. You know Morton Bondo, right? Morton's singing now. Morton is singing now. Life has become a burden. The last time someone asked me to talk about Panic of the Disco was when I was 13 years old, and I don't know if I want to revisit that. With five people and trying to achieve one creative vision, and I feel like there's too much clashing. I mean, there are benefits to that clashing. You could come out with better music, but at the end of the day, if I want to make a certain type of music and somebody doesn't, I'd be very mad. Okay, so this week, um, I called it Building. I'm going to tell you a few of these Bruce Mao points. I've just picked out a few of them, right? You have to be willing to grow. Growth is different from something that happens to you. You produce it, you live it. So it's about causing yourself to have experiences that will enable you to grow. The prerequisites for growth, the openness to experience events and the willingness to be changed by them. It's about like being in the world, but also being open to letting things happen to you and open to new experiences rather than always thinking that they're probably going to be bad because you've not experienced them before. Go deep. The deeper you go, the more likely you will discover something of value. Begin anywhere. This is when uh, not knowing where to start. John Cage reminds us that not knowing where to begin is a common form of paralysis. This one's good. I was thinking about this one. Work the metaphor. Every object has the capacity to stand in for something other than what is apparent. Work on what it stands for. We like paint, We like drawing a mountain goat, but what does a mountain goat represent? In answer to the mountain goat question, I've got no idea. Any ideas what a mountain goat might represent? I think it represents kind of resilience, keeping going in the face of storms. And, you know, you must get lots of horrible weather when you're being a mountain goat and you just keep going. Listen carefully. Every collaborator who enters our orbit brings with them a world more strange and complex than any we could ever hope to imagine. Everyone is weird and strange and complex, aren't they? You know this, whenever you sort of start to get to know people, then you sort of think you probably know a bit like what they're going to be like. And then <laughs> you get to know them a bit more and they're like, oh yeah, right. By listening to the details and the subtlety of their needs, desires or ambitions, we fold their world into our own. Neither party will ever be the same. Being open to sort of embracing the complexities of people and sort of incorporating that into how you deal with the world and your creativity, that's going to be good. Disciplinary boundaries and regulatory regimes are attempts to control the wilding of creative life. But actually the interesting stuff happens when people hop over and do something that they've never done before, or they smash some other kind of practice into their normal kind of practice to see what's going to happen. And it always turns out to be something good on the whole. Laurie Anderson was this kind of older figure who was a pioneer of electronic music and other things, and a visual artist as well. Many multi-talented, uh, very interesting what Laurie Anderson has done in her life. Don't stress so much about where you're going and planning or things going forwards. Just try to make a good thing every day. You have to let people change. People can change their minds. What's wrong with that? People changing their minds is actually good. It's, you know, it's open-minded and refreshing. Who wants to go first in our presentations of your creative stuff? What I'm about to show is like the screenshot from the movie and then the illustration I made. First movie I chose was Moonlight, which I think came out in 2016. So this is the scene that I decided to illustrate. And then this was the picture, okay. The Graduate from 1960s, it's a really good movie, but I love this. This was the hmm. um, picture. This was the picture that I ended up with. Basically, I created four playlists that are all uh, themed around color. The next one, which is Blue Diamond. And this one's kind of inspired, I guess, by the intricacy of a diamond in a way. Like the main theme is how songs could be loud and they can also be quiet. And a diamond has like a lot of cuts in it. So that'll make it like intricate. The next one is just green, like the green color palette. But it's mainly because I think of green as like a warmer color. So 
these ones are lower frequency songs. Yeah, nice. Uh, it's interesting thinking about curation as a form of creativity and uh, and the way that you group things and seeing them in terms of colors. If I'm being honest, it's probably my least favorite out of all of them, but it was really fun. So like, I kind of just put my phone on burst and like my sister dropped a grape and I tried to make it look fun in like these colored, like I put food coloring in water and I use this fancy little cup. So there's this one, there's this one. My teacher was just like, just freeze flowers and in, in ice. And I was like, okay but it actually was fun like i i enjoyed it um so the first one i have is like an art board that i did oh nice. yeah so i it, i intended it to be a mood board but i didn't find much text so what i did is i used um old magazines and i just found like different kind of patterns so basically what the task Ooh. was was to make um music festival advertisements and we were given a place in the world and an and um a genre so my place was cape town and uh -huh. my genre was r and and hip-hop what it is is like someone is crowning this listener with um a crown that says words like money hope love black community racism and then rooting from the person are all the artists that are to play at the festival this is the logo and it says crunk and cake just making necklaces from beads it was really fun and i don't have a lot because i've given a lot to my friends I guess I'm kind of embarrassed of this sometimes, but I really like cartoons and, and, and animation and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of my illustrations, pretty much all of them that I'm showing are like very based on that. I found that a lot of the time when I drew characters when I was younger, they were very static. They'd always be like in like a very straight posture or just with their hands out, but again, just standing. Uh -huh. So that was kind of my goal with this and using like certain colors that I wouldn't normally use. I did this of my mom. A friend kind of gave us a prompt to draw our pets as Animal Crossing villagers. So I drew my dog as a little villager oh, and she's wearing a little egg shirt because she really likes eating eggs. Um, this is another friend's character. I kind of drew with like um, a little Pokemon setting because she really liked Pokemon and it was her birthday. These were commissions um, that a friend asked for, for her character. Uh, this is another gift. I think it looks very pretty, but I would change a few things in that one as well. I think I was trying to illustrate how it felt when you have a spark of creativity. It's not finished at all. During quarantine, I started embroidering. I created this painting where I embroidered the canvas. I've done embroidery like on other oh. things before. So that's important. Uh -huh. Me and Rain do creativity conversations where we've talked with people around the world on about all sorts of different things. And it's just like when they're working on some creative thing and they're kind of at a block or they don't know what to do next or they're starting to develop the thing but they don't know how to get it into the world and things like that. Then we talk to them for an hour and solve all of their problems. So thank you all for coming. If you'd like to unmute and say bye-bye, then we can have a bye-bye moment. Uh, do stay in touch. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. One is blowing his kisses. Thank you. And a great semester. Thank you, David. Bye. 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 Bye.